you come back home, you get the excitement of a of a South Florida crowd inside a Hard Rock Stadium. You want to go out and put your best foot forward early in the game. So I'm looking for a fast start for the Canes. Xavier McDonald is the kick man for Bethune Cookman, and this is the dangerous Jeff Thomas on the kick return. And here comes Thomas with a burst down the right sideline. Well, that's an exciting way to get things going. That was Rayshon McNeil that forced Thomas out of bounds. And now our first look at Jaron Williams, the young man from Lawrenceville, Georgia, who won a really competitive battle to be the Canes starting QB. Three horse race in the summertime. He ends up being the leader on offense. I love his poise. I think he plays with terrific awareness, and I'd want to see him continue that in game three here. He threw for 309 yards last week against North Carolina. Uh, first down, they keep it on the ground, and Dallas is knocked down after about a three-yard pickup on the first play of the game. The Canes have had to open away from home, and Williams, who was so highly recruited coming out of high school, finally gets a chance to play in front of a friendly crowd. Well, it was funny talking with offensive coordinator Dan Enos yesterday. He says, I want Jaron to play fearless, but not careless, and I think he's done that over the first two weeks he's been able to drive the football down the field and protect it through the air Williams to the air for the first time and it's through the hands of his intended receiver Harley now let's take a look at our impact players for today's game John who do you like on offense it's DJ Dallas and Brevin Jordan Dallas he's a powerful runner downhill and Jordan possesses wide receiver skills at the tight end position and really creates mismatches for guys like Devin James at linebacker for Bethune Cookman he's that leader in the middle of their defense and so the Canes face their first third down of the day and they have struggled in this during the course of the season they come into week three last in the ACC in third down conversions Williams to the air again, and it's right through the hands of James. Nearly had it, in fact, should have had it. Well, he's our impact player in the middle of that defense for Bethune Cookman, and this time Williams looking outside, comes back inside, doesn't account for the linebacker trying to get the ball to Harley on a, on a short route, and lucky that wasn't going the other way. So our first look today at Miami's punter, Lou Headley. Australian lets it go. This is Tyree Spain running out from under it and a nice roll for Headley. Can't do that much better. Good job, Kane special teams. We do have a flag on the play. Headley will get some high fives all the way around after that one. That's about as well as you can do it. But let's see what the penalty is. During the kick. Holding receiving team number 21. That penalty is half the distance to the goal. Be first down. So Terry Tim's team will start from inside its own three yard line. In fact, inside its own one yard line after the penalty on the return. And we'll get our first look at the athletic Akibius Williams, the Bethune Cookman quarterback who played so well last year before he got hurt. Missed multiple games with an injury, but I like his demeanor at quarterback. He's elusive. He likes to run the football. I know that offensive coordinator Alan Suber maybe ran him a little bit more than he would have liked in the opener, but you're going to need to see Williams move it with his legs if they're going to stay on the field with this offense, especially when it comes to third down opportunities. Boy, he's in a tough spot here, isn't he? Working out of his end zone. First play from scrimmage. Williams goes to the air. And that'll be a gain of about a yard. That was a nice job by Romeo Finley, who made the tackle on Isaac Washington, the tailback. This is about the worst place on the field you could start, don't and, you think, and, inside the yes, one? Yes, absolutely. The first thing you're thinking about now as a quarterback, and I know Williams is thinking this, you need your first initial first down to at least win some field position back, and you have to be able to protect the football. Some offenses like to air it out down here. I wouldn't doubt if they do that on second or third down. Boy, it looks like they're doing it now. Five wides in an empty backfield. Canes come on the blitz. Williams gets it out of there in a short gain to about the four-yard line. We will see Jimmy Robinson today, won't we? He's one of your impact players for Bethune-Cookman. Well, he's the team leader in receptions and couples as a dual threat as a kick returner. And on defense for UM, it's Shaq Quarterman in the middle. He started every game he suited up for as a hurricane. And Gregory Russo, he leads the Canes in sacks and tackles for locks. 
On third down, Williams throws incomplete, and the Wildcats go three and out in a hurry, and they'll be punting out of the end zone. Well, the Canes are going to win field position. That battle from the kickoff and then a great punt. So special teams that has been up and down so far for the Canes up today inside of Hard Rock Stadium. Number 12 has changed to number 84 for Miami. Number 12 is now wearing number 84. Miami has several duplicate numbers, so you hear the changes on the numbers. And that means that uh, Jeremiah Payton will wear 84. Bryce Cowan, Bethune-Cookman's punter. Jeff Thomas, the return man, tells his teammates to get out of the way. Miami's going to end up with great field position. They struggled a year ago in this, but last week against North Carolina, they won the field position battle, particularly in the punting game. They have a flag on the play again, and our referee Trey Blake will explain it to Coach Diaz here. And now Trey will explain it to us. During the kick, holding, kicking team, number 18. 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick, first down. Adds better field position for Manny and his team. Now it's time for our food lion food for thought. Well, we talked in the open about things Miami wants to work on, penalties. That's definitely at the top of the list. They're averaging 87 yards per game. Third down conversions, they're last in the ACC, 0 for 1 today. And then red zone opportunities, it's not about getting the field goals. It's about trying to get it into the end zone and get that separation from teams like UF or teams like North Carolina. When you're in a tight game, you want to be able to get in the end zone and make it count when you're inside the 20-yard line. Great field position here, starting on the plus 33-yard line for Williams and the Kings. Here's DJ Dallas again. And he gets ahead for about three yards on the first down play. The junior from Georgia had his fourth 100-yard rushing game of his career a week ago. That was Judas McKenzie. But then Cookman made the tackle. Dallas is off to a really good start to his season. Miami's running game looks strong in the first couple of weeks. And that offensive line, that young offensive line, doing a better job early in this game. Dallas gets it again, a big hole. And a first down for Miami inside the 16-yard line. Maxwell finally brought down DJ Dallas. You know, he played behind Travis Homer, who's with the Seahawks last year, but he has taken advantage of the opportunity this year. A huge wall shut down on the right side of that Miami offensive line. Credit Clark and Scaife and the tight end, Brevin Jordan, did a great job for DJ Dallas. This is a guy that's hard to and difficult to tackle in the open space because of his running style. So Miami in the red zone for the first time today. A point of emphasis this week in practice for the Kings, taking advantage of red zone possessions. Quick throw. Inside the one-yard line. They say Osborne did not break the plane. It will be first down and goal. Bill reminiscent of the scoring play last week against North Carolina. Just a quick slant again to K.J. Osborne. It looks like he's going to maybe get that football touching and breaking the plane right there. I, I think that might be a touchdown. That, lo that ball looks like it might have touched the uh, the front end of that of the goal line. No review yet. First down and goal for the Canes from the one yard line here in the first. Dallas takes it in for the touchdown his second of the season. Touchdown for Miami and DJ Dallas. Bubba Baxa in to attempt the extra point here in the opening five minutes. Miami Hurricanes take advantage of the short field after their punter laid it up on the one. And DJ Dallas, the one yard run, puts the Canes on top early in the first.
Uh-oh, there you go. Slow slicing fruits, veggies, and those stingy onions that bring you to tears. But not anymore. In Here at Hard Rock, DJ Dallas scores his second touchdown of the year, capping off a short touchdown drive for the Canes of just 33 yards. Miami has the first score and the first lead of the game. Here for the first time this season, they're finally playing at home. You can tell the Miami fans are really excited to finally get a home game. And the players very excited, too. They come out fast. And I think that was one of the themes this week. After losing two games by a total of seven points, you wanted to come out and you wanted to play fast on offense, on defense, and really special teams set, set the tone for the game right away. Big kick return, good job on the punt team, and they capitalize once they get into the red zone. Manny and the staff said, you know, we're 0 2, but we've had really good enthusiasm at practices. He's got the kids' attention, and you're right, they're just so excited to play at home. Baxa will kick it back to Jimmy Robinson, but. Puts it into the end zone for the touchback, and Bethune Cookman will get the ball back. So Manny Diaz, as everyone knows, was a tremendous defensive coordinator here for the Canes. After all, they were fourth in the nation in total defense a year ago. In mid-December, he was named Temple's head coach, replacing Jeff Collins, who went to Georgia Tech. But then, when Mark Richt announced his retirement in December 30th, right after Christmas, Manny named the head coach. And today, for the first time, he's coaching for his favorite team in his hometown <laughs> where he is beloved. It's a dream for Manny. You know, this is a guy, the 25th head coach in school history, came back after that short stint of being named the Temple head coach, and now he's where he wants to be with the team he's trying to, to sculpt into his, his demeanor, his attitude, and I think they've done that so far this season. Better field position this time for Isaac Washington, and he gets about five yards. Let's go down to Doc. Yeah, Manny told me when he talked to the team at the hotel this morning, he said, we've checked a lot of boxes. We overcame adversity. We, we took the best punch from Florida and North Carolina, got up off the mat. But can we handle the adversity of expectation? People expect us to win, expect us to score some points. But what happens if they make plays like this? Can we handle that adversity? Good point. He said, you know, this team is good enough. Bethune-Cookman is good enough to make plays, especially that guy, Jimmy Robinson. He's one of the fastest players on either side today. And he gets a first down, and Bethune's moving the ball. Yeah, anytime Bethune can get the ball in Robinson's hands. That's a good thing for their offense. Williams on the roll, and that's incomplete. A week ago, they were down 17 to 3 in Chapel Hill and came back and took the lead. He said at no point in the game did the Canes ever doubt themselves. No, they never backed down, and they felt good about where they were in the second, third, and especially the fourth quarter after feeling like you've taken over the game. But they have to find a way to learn how to win. They have to find a way to, to, to fight through those, that adversity in a couple of plays here and there to get on the winning side of that ledger and then get on a roll. Akevius Williams kind of shovels it. Washington stays on his feet. And a strong run near midfield for this young man from Cape Coral, Florida, Isaac Washington. You know, this game means a lot for Bethune-Cookman in terms of their players, so many of them from the South Florida area or the state of Florida. So they know those guys on the other side of the line of scrimmage. They know that team on the sideline, and they, they really want to come out and show that they have talent, too, on that side. Yeah, this is the fifth time they've played since 2011, and surprisingly, Bethune-Cookman's had the lead in three of the first four sure games. Have. Third down now for the Wildcats. Williams calls for the ball. Throws on the run. That'll be a first down. Nice job by Spain to come back for the ball. And for the second time on this possession, a very poised. Kevius Williams makes a play and moves the sticks. Terrific awareness by Williams in the pocket. Watch him slide to the right subtly. And a good job of being able to come back and locate a wide receiver for a first down. Wildcats playing fast. Little counter play and not a whole lot going on inside that time. Good job by Jonathan Ford of the Canes to make the play defensively. Penetration by Bethel and Ford, 93 and 96. Respectively, they get in the deep in the Wildcats' backfield. And anytime you allow that type of penetration, you're going to have a tackle for loss. And that's one of the strengths for the Canes so far defensively. They've been able to roll a bunch of guys on that defensive line. I know, I know defensive coordinator Blake Baker really likes the way they play. Second and long. Williams throws it, and that is Wilson on the reception. 
And he's ahead to the 40. You know, they've been involved in such close games, have the Canes. They haven't had a chance to really play a lot of kids. Man, he said, I've had to go with a short bench the first two weeks. Ordinarily, early in the season, you'd like to play some people. He's not had that opportunity. Where they have played people, though, Bill, is up front. And I know that Jonathan Rousseau, who's now in the football game, he's played nose, he's played defensive tackle, he's played defensive end. He's been all around, but you're right. As a team, they would like to get more guys in and they'd like to get more experience as they go deeper into the ACC schedule. Third and seven for Akevius Wilson. Canes are coming to get him. And they got him. Gervin Hall, along with Pinckney, bring down Williams. Wide side pressure really gets to the quarterback in Williams. They're going to blitz off the edge here. And that flushes Williams to the pressure in the middle of the football field. Good job by Gervin Hall coming from that secondary spot for the sack on third down. Coward will punt it back to Jeff Thomas. Both punters in today's game are from Australia. Coward of Bethune-Cookman played uh, last year for a college in Hobart, Tasmania. One of the Bethune-Cookman players turned up field prior to the snap. And Coward will have to kick it again. False start. Offense, number 23. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Terry Sims was an assistant at Howard. He started his career as a GA at Louisville under coach Ron Cooper. Was a baseball and football player at Knoxville College in Tennessee. Was Terry Sims. And he's accustomed to winning when he comes down to South Florida, especially against BCS teams. I think he's defeated FIU both in 2003 and two, or 2013 and 2014. Whistles again before and another penalty on the Wildcats. All start offense number 33 five yard penalty still fourth down. Well this is an example of some hidden yardage and that's not what Terry wants for his team. This is an area where you, you can if you don't win at least tie right. Well now Bryce Coward the punter is going to be able to air it out at <laughs> least. There's no uh, corner kicks now after the 10 yards going against their special teams. Gets this one away and it's short angling to the far side and it goes out of bounds on the fly and the Canes will get the ball back. Seven nothing Miami has the lead. What a beautiful campus the University of Miami the Coral Gables on a Saturday afternoon. Personal training just got a lot more personal. Good morning from Bora Bora. Introducing the all new X series from Nordic Track. You ready to get started on today's workout. Let's go. All you CCN. Well, for the fifth time since 2011, the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats are here in Miami playing the Miami Hurricanes, coming down from Daytona Beach. Among their notable alums is Larry Little. He was a young man from Miami. He played at Booker T. Washington High School here in Miami. Later a great player for the Miami Dolphins. Last week, Bethune-Cookman didn't have a game. Hurricane Dorian churning over in the Atlantic, steaming towards Florida's east coast, and they had to stay in Atlanta following their win over Jackson State, and they were stranded there. Fortunately, a former Clark Atlanta University player reached out and says, we'll help you out. Stay in Atlanta. Georgia State said, you're welcome to use our weight room, and that's exactly what Terry Sims and his guys did. They spent an extra few days up in Atlanta because of Hurricane Dorian. And they did, and sometimes, you know, you're looking for that big jump, and I know head coach Terry Sims was from week one to week two. They didn't have that opportunity because of the storm. Haynes get the ball and a deep shot now for Williams. And he's got his man. That's Pope all the way inside the 20 yard line. An explosive play for the Canes. Just a great job of play action, good protection in the pocket, and they finally get one down the field. The deep ball issues are no longer just one of five going into the game with throws over 20 yards. This time, Mark Pope gets behind coverage, and the Hurricanes are again in the red zone knocking at the door. <laughs> High 
A toss on first down to the powerful Cameron Harris. And he's knocked down by Hendricks. Marquise Hendricks, a senior whose father played at Bethune Cookman. Fans might remember he started his career at Boise State. And now the senior from Ocala finishing up his collegiate career for Bethune Cookman. Marquis doing a good job coming from the middle and getting outside on a guy that's very elusive in Harris. Well, Harris really ran the ball hard and punished people up in Chapel Hill last week. Play fake this time for Jaron Williams. And he underthrows that one. It's caught over there by Hightower, but he had to dive to make the grab. And that's one Jared would like to have back. I think if that ball gets out there a touch quicker with a little bit more touch, a little bit more air because he's wide open, is Hightower in the flat. He's able to catch and maybe turn towards the pylon. They were really happy the way Williams was more efficient last week. And you can see already today he seems very poised. Remember, it's just his third collegiate game. Haynes can get a first down at about the seven. And they make a change at QB, bring in Martell in for the snap, but a flag before the play. And number 53, five yard penalty, third down. So there was the little Tate Martell package that we had expected to see. He was in for one play, and now Tate will take a seat. Well, that's the area of the field as well, though, Bill, that the Hurricanes, once they get inside the red zone, inside the 20-yard line, you don't want to have those penalties before the snap of the football. Those have plagued them over the last couple of weeks. It seems to set them back now on third and long. It's the eighth pre-snap penalty, now make it nine, the ninth pre-snap penalty of the year against Miami's offense. Williams to the air again. Again, he threw it behind Thomas, who adjusted well to make the grab, but just a short gain. That's two throws in a row that Jaron probably wishes he had back. And that was good coverage. Let's credit Bethune Cookman in their secondary, the back seven. They did a really good job of, in a short space inside of the red zone, inside the 20 yard line, they're able to cover up the elusive speed of Miami and hold them to a field goal opportunity. So here's Baxa. This will be a 30 yard attempt. He was low on some of his kicks. Last week in Chapel Hill, had a couple blocked, one tip, one blocked. Four of seven on the year for a back zone. And he misses that one. So the kicking game continues to plague the Canes early in this 2019 season as Bubba Baxa misses for the fourth time this season. And this one wide right. Bethune Cookman gets the ball. When we come back to Miami. Florida State coming to town. Who's are ranked 25th. That's our ACC and primetime matchup presented by Geico tonight. The Who's and the Knowles tonight at Scott Stadium. All right, what's going through the mind of Bubba Baxter now, though? Miami kickers missed four field goals. Well, it's got to be frustration on that sideline, and, and you figure they're not 50 yarders. He's missed some chip shots so far this season. First down run to Jimmy Robinson, the very athletic senior for Bethune Cookman. During the week, Coach Diaz said, Bax is my guy. He is our great kicker. We are 100% behind it. And you have to be. You know, you have to come up and you see his teammates on the sidelines trying to give him some encouragement, but no one feels worse than Bubba on that sidelines. He's waiting for his next opportunity, and he hopes it's it's successful because once that ball starts rolling down the hill the wrong way, it's, it's tough to come back as a kicker because you get one chance, maybe two a game. Akivi is William and the Wildcats. They keep it on the ground again, and that's Washington and Al Blades Jr. Making the play from St. Thomas Aquinas High School, just up the road in Fort Lauderdale. That program where Blades is from has turned out some really good players, including Mr. Kinjemi. Yeah, I, I had the pleasure of attending St. Thomas, and Al Blades, one of those guys that holding up the banner, and they're doing it in the National Football League as well. 13 players from St. Thomas Aquinas on rosters in the NFL, so I think they lead the country again. 13 players from one high school active in the NFL. There are a lot of colleges that can't make that play. That's right. Third down again for Bethune. 
That pass is caught by the tight end Mallard, but the Canes bringing down, it'll be a, a loss back on the 25. If you're a Canes fan, and especially a, a fan of defensive football, this is what you like to see. All 11 guys were in the frame around the, the tackle for a loss on, on third down. That's got to be encouraging for defensive coordinator Blake Baker and head coach Manny number Diaz. Number for Miami is now wearing number 84. Number 50 for Miami is now wearing number 80. Jeff Thomas of the Canes back to return another punt from Bryce Coward, the Bethune Cookman punter. And again, he angles it away, not letting Thomas catch his first punt return of the day. Back to Miami in a moment. Well, have you had the chance to check out the huddle, our signature football show hosted by Jack Conklin, analyst Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, and Coach Mark Rick. They'll preview the weekend slate of games and keep you updated on all things ACC football. Friday night at 8 Eastern, Saturday morning at 11 a.m. right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Canes are enjoying good field position again as they start this drive. Averaging their own 47-yard line and ready to strike again offensively. On first down, Cameron Harris. Rayshon McNeil makes the play defensively on Miami's rugged tailback. I like the balance of DJ Dallas and Cameron Harris as their one-two punch in the backfield for Miami. Dallas, tough to tackle. Harris, really elusive on the edge. He gives you that burst once he gets to that second level. Diaz of the offensive coordinator, Dan Enos, were really impressed with how hard those guys ran and ran downhill. Williams, that's one of his best throws of the game. And a first down in the Bethune Cookman territory to Jeff Thomas. Sam Mark, a hometown kid from nearby Norland High School, made the tackle on Thomas. Same play action philosophy going to his left as they had in the red zone on the previous series but that time Williams gets the ball out quicker squared his shoulders and hips up and put a little bit of air onto the football and he had enough zip to get it outside five of seven for 88 yards another quick start for the redshirt freshman yeah and you know he, he beat out Martell he beat out Nikosi Perry he he has had to perform and we've seen this since August that's the end of the first quarter. that is the end of the opening period Jaron Williams and the Canes in the 2019 home opener have the lead over visiting Bethune Cookman here in the South Florida tropics. They've enjoyed great field position, and Miami's defense has forced three punts, three possessions for the opponent. DJ Dallas has the game's lone score. 7-0 Miami with the lead and the ball as we begin quarter number two. Cameron Harris, a first down carry, and Bethune Cookman's defense loads up to bring him down. Let's go down to the sidelines once again. Here's Doc Punch. You mentioned that three-way quarterback battle with Jaron Williams between spring and fall. Now, he said in order to prove to the coaches he had a commitment, passion, and work ethic to win that battle, he said he dropped his body fat from 15 to 11 percent. Dropped his weight from 220 to 210, but most importantly, he worked on his lower body mechanics. He said he had a tendency not to push off, and he would fall backwards when he threw the ball. Now he's falling forwards and bringing that base lag around, which allows him more stability, but also time better out. accuracy. I agree with you, Doc. You know, you watch him. It'll be a 30-second timeout. You watch the improvement in terms of his mechanics with his eyes matching his feet. And just his overall awareness within the pocket, he's moving a lot quicker. He's able to get outside on play action passes, and he's able to get to more offense in the passing game. So all those attributes you mentioned really help Jared not only win the position, but it's going to help him keep the position if he keeps performing the way he has over two weeks. John, what are they doing offensively with him and developing him? They're saying right now he's basically just taking algebra one. Right. This isn't the most advanced offense that he will be orchestrating in October and then into November. Well, I think you want to spoon feed a, a young redshirt freshman quarterback. You don't want to limit him, but you don't want to overwhelm him. So I think Dan Enos, the offensive coordinator, has done a nice job of knowing the limitations on what you can give 
Jaron to handle at the line of scrimmage, what you can give him to handle in terms of getting in and out of plays or either or runs at the line of scrimmage. And then you progress that. If once he passes the test on a certain a couple of issues, you give him more. And that's how you earn uh, your stripes as a quarterback. And one of those issues was don't be afraid to throw the ball away. He took a bunch of sacks in the Florida game up in Orlando, and he said it's okay to sacrifice, throw it away. A deep shot, no one's home. There were 10 sacks in that very first game of Williams, and some of them could have been avoided had he just thrown it away. Well, anytime you see that number, it's a shared environment with the quarterback and the offensive line, and maybe the running backs not out allowing the, the chips a little bit longer on the edge. So Manny Diaz knows that. He, he went back. They got with the offensive staff. They corrected it in week two, four sacks, and now you see it. The offensive line starting to mature with the quarterback, and that's why this team could be really good for a long time. Yeah, it's a young offensive line, too, and they've been thrown into some really tough situations against the Gators, and then last week in Chapel Hill. Williams passes deflected once again over the middle by James, the middle linebacker, dropping into coverage. Well, that's the second time that Devin James has gotten his hands on the football, and really, Jaron Williams lucky either one both of them really should have been interceptions this is a, a touch pass over the middle but has a little bit too much of a line on it you want to get just a hair more air to fit that in or lead your receiver Jeff Thomas to, to green grass as he was going from left to right here's Lou Headley he's been a key guy in this game the Aussie has taken care of field position kicking the ball inside the 10 can he do it again that's Jimmy Robinson in the fair catch near the six so once again, a 7 up in Miami, and the story so far has been the defense and the pressure on Akevius Williams in the run game. You get penetration, you get tackles for loss, and that's exactly what Pat Bethel and Jonathan Ford can do to you. And around the football, on this particular play, all 11 Miami Hurricanes in on the tackle. So you love to see that if your head coach, Miami Diaz, or defensive coordinator, Blake Baker. The, the numbers last year compared to this year, they're a little bit off, but the one thing Miami has done really well this year, and they're first in the ACC fifth in the country is getting off the field on third down. Bethune Cookman again starting inside its own 10 yard line that goes through the hands of Jimmy Robinson an incomplete pass from Akevius Williams and Bill that's been the story for Bethune Cookman offensively you need a couple of first downs you need to string an explosive play to get out of the shadow of your own end zone and if you live like that for too many quarters you're not going to be able to score points You've got to be able to either to get an explosive play on offense down the field or you've got to be able to string a couple of first downs together to flip the field position. They're going empty set again with five receivers. Akevius gets it out of there quick and Wilson is dropped down at the six. That is a loss of a yard again. That's the fourth negative play of this first half. And Russo making the play that time on the receiver. I love the versatility of Gregory Russo on the outside. He's big enough. He's got that range to be able to, the strength to be able to hold on to a ball carrier or a receiver in the open field. You can line him up as a defensive tackle, and he's strong enough to slither his way through with that huge frame at 6'6", 260 pounds. Very versatile defensive lineman. And now on third and ten, you know the Canes are coming for Akevius Williams. They want to break out this turnover chain on third down. Wildcats play it safe. Williams gets, oh, about six yards out of it, and that'll give their punter a bit more room to punt. Fourth and four. Another three and out. Good job number by the Kings. Number three for Miami defense. is now wearing number 80. Number 12 for Miami is now wearing number 84. In their last game, in fact, their only game so far this season, Bethune Cookman really struggled in the first half. They exploded in the second half, but remember, they haven't played in a couple of weeks. And that really, you know, you can tell the biggest improvement everybody always says is between week one and week two and head coach Terry Sims didn't get that opportunity not only to see his team play but to coach him during the week so he can make adjustments you know they were they were displaced because of the hurricane and you can tell they're just a little bit off today against a bigger opponent Howard gets it away again but we've got flags and a whistle the way of game offense five yard penalty remains fourth down So this young man from Tasmania will take a few steps backward and kick it away again. And of the five penalties Bethune Cookman has in 15 yards are on the punting unit. 
Miami is going to get great field position once more. They have really dominated in that area, which is a 180 from a year ago, where Miami really struggled with field position. Coming for the block. Howard just gets it out of there, and Thomas will watch it roll. Let's check out the new turnover chain. We're going to fill you in on this beauty. John's got his on as well. Win the game 41 to 13 and the turnover chain has become a big part of the Miami tradition. The original turnover chain had the U logo. Last year Sebastian the Ibis was on the turnover chain and this year 500 stones including 2,000 white sapphires in the 10 inch 305 in the middle for the turnover chain. I don't know. I'm, I might be a stick in the mud here, but I'm liking the original you as, as the turnover train to be honest with you. They're proud of uh, the area code here. Here's Thomas on the end around and he gets about eight on the first down play for uh, this young man who had a really good game. He had seven catches last week against North Carolina. One thing that Dan Enos is doing is he's getting a lot of touches for a lot of different people. Yeah, nine different players have had at least one reception, and now you get to hand the football to a guy that's a glider in the open space. He really turns into a running back when he's in the open field. He's tough to corral, Jeff Thomas. He, he's one of those stud wide receivers. Dallas, strong run. DJ Dallas down the sidelines. Touchdown, Miami. Those are the types of plays you like to see when you come home, the home opener. For this offense and this team, just bouncing it outside. Great point of attack by Zion Nelson, the, the young freshman, true freshman left tackle, really opens up the left side for DJ Dallas, and he goes 51 yards untouched. Max adds the extra point. Touchdown rings for DJ Dallas. Two touches, two touchdowns for the young man from Brunswick, Georgia. And the Canes lead by 14. A 14 0 lead over Bethune Cookman here at Hard Rock Stadium. Those explosive plays is really what Miami, the Hurricanes offensively, are known for. You know, you see those explosive passes, but the running game, I think, is where Dan Enos, the offensive coordinator, would like to live over the next couple of weeks if he can get those 50 plus runs 40 plus runs out of the running game boy it sure does take a whole lot of pressure off of Williams in that passing attack Robinson watches that one go and another touchback for Baxa Bill what I really like about this play is you get the freshman the true freshman walling off here you get another young lineman walling off here and then I think you get Harley coming at the second level for a block and that's going to allow DJ Dallas just to bounce it to the left side. There's the block from the outside, and now he uses that speed. You take a bad angle from a defensive safety in Vernon Walker, and you go 51 yards untouched. So it starts up front, and it ends with that, that big run. And, you know, uh, Doc, Zion Nelson's got a real nice story, too, doesn't he? Yeah, he was a two-star recruit. Yeah, I said two-star out of Sumter, South Carolina. Came in weighing 240 pounds. He chose Miami over offers from Appalachian State, Coastal Carolina, and Campbell. He came in as a two star and now he started to make it now three games. How about that for the stars not meaning a lot yeah, and gained a lot of weight too and that says an awful lot about that young man. He knew he had an opportunity to play here at Miami but he knew he had to put on some weight. Well he moves well he's strong at the point of attack and he's only going to get better. Remember this is a true freshman guy getting thrown in and once that once you start getting a little confidence in yourself especially as an offensive lineman. You start working better with the guy next to you. You start working better with the tight end that's outside of you, and you make plays like that up front. Akevius Williams trying to get something going against the Miami defense, and that's incomplete. It'll be another third down play. Bandy got in the way of that one. Miami's defense is so fast and so athletic. 
Well, they can make up if they take a bad angle. They are so fast and, and they can, they're agile. They can get to the right spot. They find the football and on third down, they've had a real knack of getting off the field. I mentioned earlier, number one in the ACC, fifth overall in the country on getting off the field on third down and Blake Baker likes what he's seen so far through two games in this situation. And Akevius, he's been behind the sticks all day. He hasn't had a lot of easy third downs, and this is going to be a tough one as well. Third and ten against this Miami defense and the Miami crowd. And he just throws that one away. Fourth three and out for the Canes defense as Patchen was all over Akevius Williams on that play. patchen has been disruptive not only today but through two weeks, and this time he just wins on the outside. Really nobody assigned to the defensive end and that's just number a bust up Miami front number eight. and Bryce Coward he's done a nice job in this game not letting Jeff Thomas return a punt you know Jeff would love to catch one of these and return one right well, I think that's a wise decision <laughs> coming into the game by head coach Terry Sims being able to kick away from the electric punt return each of his punts have either bounced out of bounds or gone out of bounds on the fly Tom's going to get his first touch now, however, from the 37. There is a flag, but you see how electric Thomas can be. But I have a hunch this one's coming back. During the kick, illegal block in the back, return team, number 23. 10 yards from the end of the kick, first down. So the penalty on Miami will move the ball uh, back inside the 30-yard line. So a year ago, as Miami fans know, Travis Homer was kind of the guy running the football. DJ Dallas trying to take advantage of his opportunity in 2019. Well, he really has done a nice job of being able to square those shoulders, run with power when he needs to inside the tackles for the touchdown today. But when he bounces it outside, he has another gear for a guy that's 5'10", 215. He's running away from a lot of athletes from Bethune-Cookman. This is one of four ACC running backs averaging over 100 yards per game. So. This is a guy that really gets it done, and another guy that gets it done is, is Cameron Harris, who's in the game now. A play fake for Williams. Nicely delivered right on the money, Miami first down. Boy, he can make that throw across the field, can he? Second catch for Pope today. When you get a clean pocket, and it's been very clean today for Williams. Look at, there's no one within five yards. He's able to step into throws. You mentioned maybe backing away from throws earlier, uh, maybe in the summertime and things he needed to improve on. And I know Doc had mentioned that as well, but there's things that he needs to improve on. You can do a lot when you have such a clean window to throw the football. You know, Nikosi Perry played so much last year. Tate Martell got a lot of ink when he transferred here. There were maybe some odds against Williams, but you Ball can start. see why they Ball made fence. the decision to go Number with him. 55, five-yard penalty, first down. Another penalty on Miami. Do you think the 0-2 start is more of a reflection of the Canes' schedule uh, than anything else, where they had to play with young people and a freshman quarterback? I do. I think that they played well, especially against North Carolina in the second and third and halfway through the fourth quarter, majority of the fourth quarter. I think... It was too much to handle going up against a team that's probably a little bit more advanced than they are in UF in the opener in Orlando. Williams is able to dump it off this time to Harley. Gets a great block from his teammate. Just shy of the first down, but Harley again shows his ability. Laguerre made the play defensively. Get the football to your athletes in space. That's what it's all about for Williams. Distribute the football. Find guys. Get rid of it in with some urgency and then look at the downfield block by Harris doing his part when he doesn't have the football as a running back. Got 13 on that it'll be second down and two for the Canes looking to build on their two touchdown lead. Here's Harris again nice hesitation and then he explodes up the middle. Well he read that well you can see the vision there of Cameron Harris. Terrific patience by the sophomore running back out of Opelika Florida. Wasn't there initially, kind of geared it down, waited for his lineman 
to get a hat on a hat, and then he found that crease to the short side that pushes the football down to the 23-yard line. You know, I was reading about him. You know, he visited Wisconsin. He kind of reminds you of a guy that would play there, right? It does. He, he likes to hit, hit the defensive back when he gets there. And then kind of fill that crease, press that crease of the hole, and he gets to the opposite side of it with urgency. Williams dumps it off this time, and Harris, his first catch of the day. And he gets about three yards before Devin James brings him down, the junior middle linebacker for BCU. I can really see why defensive coordinator Charles Yogi Jones, a former teammate of mine at Pitt, talked about Devin James being a leader at that middle linebacker spot. That's probably the second or third time he's gotten around the football. He had his hands on a couple of them earlier, and then he was able to, to come up with an open field tackle there. You know, Devin, he made his first start here a couple years ago as a true freshman. So this is the second time he is starting against Miami here at Hard Rock. Here's Dallas, who has two touchdowns already in the first half. And that is very close to the first down. I think that'll move the sticks. Yes, it will. There is Clark brings down DJ Dallas. And this is one of the areas on the field that Miami really wanted to improve on as we have a Bethune Time out for an player, player down on the field. That's Jamarcus Reeves, defensive end for Bethune Cookman. Midway through the second quarter, Miami leading here 14 nothing. Yo, update for you, Louisville up 14 to seven. This time, they get it done on the ground. That's JV on Hawkins takes it in for a 20 yard score. Cards up 21 to seven in the first half. Bill. All right, Kelsey, thank you. Here, Miami has a two touchdown lead led by Jaron Williams midway through the second quarter, looking to add to that in the red zone once more. Williams to the end zone, and he overshoots Hightower. Laguerre had the coverage on the play, and it'll be second down. So they've let Williams throw the ball a bunch in the red zone here today. You know, some of the issues in the red zone has been the inability of Miami to run the football, and for a young quarterback, it's, it's always tougher to throw it when you're inside the 15 or the 10 because those windows become so much shorter and smaller and the ball has to get there on time mm -hmm. he hasn't dialed Revan Jordan's number yet today keep it on the ground again and the powerful Harris runs down to the seven yard line and Marquise Hendricks the tackle outside linebacker for Bethune Cookman they really like Jordan not only as a receiver but as a blocker as well well he's a guy that has good size and he's a mismatch when you take him and displace him from the traditional tight end position and you flex him you put him in the slot you stand him up he's a tough assignment for a nickel corner he's a tough assignment for a linebacker and he's good at moving people at the point of attack as a blocking tight end Miami can get a first down on the four here Williams on the keeper or is it Martell it is Tate Martell on the keeper Inside the five yard line and right near the sticks. He needed to get to the four, did the former Buckeye. That was really good second and third effort by Tate Martell. We were talking to offensive coordinator Dan Enos yesterday. He just wants an opportunity to get on the field. He goes inside, he gets hit, keeps his feet, maybe gets down to the four and a half yard line. It was good enough to cross the five, but this is going to be a fourth down opportunity for the Canes. Fourth and one, Miami has not converted a fourth down on three attempts this season. Can they get this one? I don't think so. Nope. Oh, for four. Cameron Harris knocked down behind the line of scrimmage by Devin James, the leader of the BCU defense and the captain of that linebacking core who runs the show for Yogi Jones' defense, the biggest defensive play today for BCU. That's just a bust up front. Anytime you can get penetration, and that time Devin James just shoots the gap between the guard and center. What a terrific job of getting, finding the football, and then having help to the short side. That's going to turn the ball over. And you mentioned 0, 0 for 5 for the Canes going in on fourth down. Make it 0 for 6 on the season. 
Well, the good news if you're the Wildcats is that they get a defensive stop. The bad news is here they go again, starting a drive from inside their own 10-yard line. Yeah, that, that's been the difficult part for the Wildcats on offense. It's, it's been to the advantage of the Hurricanes on defense. They've been able to flip the field for the majority of the first half. It's almost as if this entire game has been played on the Bethune-Cookman side of the field. They send Washington in motion, throwing the ball, and he's knocked down. He did break the plane. It will not be a safety, according to the line judge, but what a job by Ivy reading that beautifully. The ruling on the field is that the runner was down at the, two, at the one yard line. The that, that was close, Bill. This ball is completed in the end zone with the majority of his body, but I think he catches the football at the goal line and gets it across. Yes, just about a half a yard in front in the field of play so the official had a good look at it he did. instantly put two fingers in the air saying second down but boy you talk about a tough tough environment right in front of that Miami student section for Akevius Williams Washington on the pitch gets it to about the five yard line and the athletic Shaq Horniman runs him down you get the exhale from the Wildcat sideline <laughs> because that ball was touching Pretty much the goal line. Now they get it outside to about the 11 yard line with a third down situation. Today, Bethune Cookman only one of six on third down. They haven't had many third and shorts, though, have they? No, they haven't. Big rush, and Williams has to get it out of there. Miami too strong, up the gut once more. And Akevius, well, he's ended up on his backside a bunch today, and it was Miller that got him that time. They're so strong up front. They really do, and they rotate those guys. We've seen Bethel, we've seen Ford in the backfield. Now Jordan Miller, he gets a crease along with Michael Pickney, one of those standout linebackers that force another punting situation for the Wildcats. And Bryce Coward, he's been just as much a part of the end zone design today as the paint. He's been kicking out of the end zone seemingly every time. This will be the fourth time, actually, that he's kicking out of the end zone. Jeff Thomas watches that sail out of bounds, but the Canes will have pretty good field position again with 4.28 to go in the first half. And coming up at the break, it's our State Farm halftime report. We'll look back at the first half here at Hard Rock. The Citadel getting it done on the flats. And we will look ahead to tonight's big game in Charlottesville. The Knolls and the Hoos. A big game for UVA and a big game for FSU, too. Boy, Florida State needs a win badly, but they're running into a hornet's nest tonight. They really, they, they have struggled mightily. They rank last in total defense, 13th in rushing defense in Virginia with a lot of momentum offensively with Bryce Perkins at quarterback. Here's Dallas. Nearly broke that one. DJ got about nine on the first down play. He scored both touchdowns in the game. Again, it was Trevor Merritt who brought down the terrific University of Miami tailback from Georgia. You got four 11 and counting until halftime. You would think the mentality now for Dan Enos, the offensive coordinator, is to get this football in the end zone and then maybe get one more try at it, maybe one more shot to score points. But this is an important drive for the Hurricanes in terms of taking advantage of great field position and getting in the end zone. Well, this happened in Chapel Hill. Remember, they talked about they dominated the game but didn't get the points. Right. This game, they had a missed field goal in the red zone, zero points. Fourth down inside the 10, zero points. And now you get a negative run on second down. And it will be third down. McKenzie getting some interior pressure for Bethune Cookman. Good job at the point of attack. And now you, you face a third down where Miami has struggled mightily. They've struggled today. They're 0 for 4 on third downs. They came into the game last in the ACC, only t converting 21% of those third down opportunities. And if they want to get points before halftime, they better execute here on third down. Williams to the air on third and short. It's going to be mighty close as Osborne gets tripped up by hometown kid Sam Mark. Let's see where they put this football. That's going to be short. I believe so. And another fourth down for the U. I don't think that offense is going anywhere. They're staying on the field. And this is where your offensive line 
has to come up big. I, I don't think there was any hesitation in head coach Manny Diaz. He wants to instill some toughness in this group. This is where you do it right now on fourth and short. Well, just a few moments ago, they had fourth down inside the 10, and they didn't block the linebacker, James. Let's see what they do now. The third tight end of the game. Fourth and one. They're going to throw it to Brevin Jordan, his first touch of the day, and he does have the first down. Well, what does that tell us, that they threw the ball on fourth and short? Well, I, I don't mind the call because you're going to one of your, your playmakers to the short side. It's a safe pass. And it takes a lot of pressure off your kicking game because that would have been a field goal that would have test, tested backs. Who missed earlier today, and Bubba's missed four of his first eight attempts of this season. I'd like to see him go play action again here and maybe take a shot at the end zone. Both Mallory and Jordan remain in the game. Two pretty good receiving tight ends. Wiggins. Wiggins explodes. And he scores. Or did he step out first? Yes, he did. Tremendous run by D. Wiggins. They say his foot hit the sideline near the two. Another young sophomore playmaker. For this offense, it looked like that. Well, I don't know. It was tough to see where the foot, the official had a real good look at it running down the sideline. I don't know if it was the right foot or the maybe it was the left foot there that maybe hits in the paint around the two yard line, but that was an explosive run by, by Wiggins. From the two, remember Dallas has two touchdowns today, looking for a third. And they rule him down inside the one. So Miami is taking advantage all half long, really, of great field position. If they can punch in a touchdown here, the ball inside the one yard line. It's easy to say give it to Dallas again because you've only got a yard to go, and that offensive line maybe can lean on Bethune up front. That's Corey Gaynor, their young center. Dallas right behind Corey for his third touchdown of this first half. You like to see this team finish, and that's what they needed to do today at home. Finish in the red zone, take advantage of terrific field position. Get that offensive line going in the run game and DJ Dallas gets those shoulders square and he gets airborne for six. Three touchdowns for Dallas in the first half. That is a career high. Another short drive, just 45 yards in seven plays. The Canes have taken advantage of great field position and Dallas is averaging, look at that, John, nine yards a touch. Well, he came into the game as one of four ACC running backs averaging over 100 yards a game. He's well on his way in the first half, and it also helps with that career high of three touchdowns. Coach Diaz made a big point about finishing. If they've had the lead in the second half of their first couple of games. They had the lead late in the fourth quarter in Chapel Hill a week ago. So it, his team knows it's darn close to being good. It is. And it's one of those things, until you do it, you can talk it until you're blue in the face as a head coach, as a coordinator, anybody around this team. You could do it amongst your teammates. But until you actually go out and physically do it on the football field, that's when your team starts believing. That's when your, your teammates and you, you start growing as a young team into a more mature team. And you don't really flinch when you're, when you're faced with adversity. And they've been faced with plenty of it over the first two weeks. Today they're responding at home with 22 fir or 21 first half points. Back to put it away again to Jimmy Robinson, who's an electric return man. And all he had to show for today is watching the ball sail over his head once again. Well, coming up tomorrow, we have a top 20 women's soccer matchup for you. Number seven, South Carolina takes on number 20, Clemson, at historic Riggs Field. 6 p.m. Eastern right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. It doesn't matter what the sport is. When the Gamecocks and the Tigers get together, it is fun to watch. You know, I was guessing that when I saw those logos come up.
Anytime South Carolina and Clemson get together, it's going to be a contest. Well, Akevius Williams has gotten to know Shaq Quarterman and Michael Pinkney and the Canes defense pretty well here in this he first He has. Half. He has to protect the football with 57 seconds left before halftime. The last thing you want to do is give the Canes either field position or a score on defense. And a solid run on first down. They head to the 31-yard line for Wilson. Quarterman again making the tackle. The Middle linebacker for the Canes. Boy, he, whenever you watch a Miami game over the last couple of years, you know who 55 is. You know, this is his 42nd consecutive start. It's amazing. You, you talk about Quarterman and Pickney and McLeod, that threesome. Mm -hmm. You know, both Pickney and Quarterman are, are on track to earn their undergraduate degrees, and McLeod has begun work towards his master's. That, that, that was been the nucleus in the middle of this defense, and it's all based around the play of Quarterman and Pickney. And now McLeod this year probably let to a lesser extent, but you can see Manny Diaz talking at Pickney and at Quarterman and at the rest of that defense. He's making a point at the end of a half. He wants to get off the field, use their timeouts, and get that football back and potentially score again. Uh, the defense has been dynamite, but Thune Cookman hasn't come close to crossing the 50, let alone uh, scoring here. Now, get a shot there of. Shaq Quarterman, first team all ACC in 2018. You mentioned the 42 straight games and his entire career he's dressed as a hurricane. That's the second longest active streak in FBS. Well, it helps when you've got leaders on defense. They have been really dynamite. They were fourth in the country a year ago in total defense. And number one in third down defense. And you can see in this game, that group has allowed just 57 yards. Well, I think that group now with Blake Baker as their DC taking a shot of him on the sidelines. If they get a stop, a negative play, or a two yard gain, there's another timeout coming. Williams in high speed pursuit. He's able to get away. And he steps out. That will stop the clock after a gain of about a yard. Again, you can see Miami's linebackers can really run as, as fast as Akevius Williams is. Portman. And step for step with him. Yeah, and Pat Bethel coming from that defensive tackle spot. He was the guy that was first on the scene flushing Williams from the pocket. Still just one for seven on third downs, but they haven't had a lot of these third and one. They want, may want to move the pocket to the wide side of the field here. Haynes coming on the blitz and they get home. He was able to get rid of the ball nicely to Thomas. Loose ball. And we have the game's first turnover. It looked like Knowles was on the bottom of the pile for the Canes. He did. And Robert Knowles, the freshman from Edson, Edison High School, or I should say a senior. He is a senior. He's going to get to wear the brand new turnover chain. There we go. Oh, you can tell Robert Knowles is excited. <laughs> Where is it? There it is. 2,000 white sapphires on that beauty. To the pleasure of the South Florida crowd. Well, Dan Enos and Jared Williams have take a 16 shot. seconds here to do something take at the end of this first half. Field. Beautiful throw, Williams threading the needle to K.J. Osborne. The Canes remember now, John, they have two timeouts They just took too. another one. That's a timeout right there with the ball inside the 25-yard line. It'll be a 30-second timeout. Nine seconds, and you have the hunch that while you'd love to get the touchdown, wouldn't Manny like to give Bubba Baxa a chance to kick one more time to make one just for his confidence here you know what you, yes you'd like to see that opportunity but i think more importantly he'd like to see the ball go in the end zone he'd like to see his quarterback find either mike harley on a crossing route or a corner route to kj osborne or a seam down the middle to bevan jordan he'd like to see the offense execute because now you, you've got a sudden change opportunity you just can't practice this on a tuesday or a wednesday it's it's inside hard rock stadium it's live action. Even though you'd like to see your kicker gain some confidence, you'd rather see your offense take advantage and push it into the end zone. 
Nine seconds and one timeout for Jaron Williams. Going to the end zone. Leaping grab, KJ Osborne. And that, my friends, was a 22-yard laser from the young quarterback. Partner, that's what you want to see. That's what you want to see, a redshirt freshman quarterback find K.J. Osborne, find one of his playmakers, and throw a dart over coverage into the end zone for six points. AXA does add the extra point, and so Miami, a late second quarter turnover, and Jaron Williams connects with the young man who transferred from Buffalo, K.J. Osborne. Yeah, Manny likes it, too. That's exactly what they talked about. He was talking to his defense about getting the football back. They got it back, and he was talking about to his offense about don't waste this opportunity. We wasted too many opportunities over the first couple of weeks in terms of sacks, in terms of not converting on third down, red zone chances, let's finish. And that young man found a way to finish right before halftime. Yeah, Miami led this game 14-0. Two touchdowns in the final minute of this first half has opened it up to 28-0. Yeah, there's a lot of signs that head coaches are looking for in a young team. And I think he he's happy, Manny is happy right now because they finished the way he wanted to on defense, and it was complimentary football. They got it back, and the offense was able to stick it in the end zone. Those are going to pay dividends as the season wears on when Virginia and Virginia Tech and Pitt, all those teams start appearing on your schedule. You have to be able to rely and go back and say, yes, we've done this in the past. Let's continue to build on that. From the back of the end zone, Jimmy Robinson gets it to the 10 on the final play of the first half. Well, the Miami Hurricanes will play it in to seven points. That's where Manny Diaz can put a smile on his face coming out to start the third quarter. And clearly they left uh, some points on the board, a missed field goal from yeah. 30 yards away. They a got stopped shot. on a fourth and one. So some issues. We'll see how the Canes handle it in the third quarter. And while Baxa has missed some kicks, his kickoffs have been terrific. The elusive Robinson's going to get a chance here, and he is a terrific sprinter. Flag is thrown as Robinson gets out to the 36-yard line. Miami has found itself in tight games for the first couple of weeks. Today, for the first time this year, they've got a bit of a comfortable lead. And let's see what the penalty is. They're asking Miami. So the penalty is on the return, evidently. And they'll ask Coach Diaz what he wants to do. A long discussion by our crew. It's a, an ex exciting day for the Diaz family, though, you know, and I know that uh, they clearly wanted to be 2-0 and coming into this game today, but what an opportunity for Manny today coaching on this field for this team. Well, he comes back and he, it's his home opener. You want to be able to, to go out and improve from what you've done over the last During two the weeks. Kick, holding, kicking team number 52. During the return, personal foul, horse collar tackle on the kicking team. Those penalties all set will replay the kick. So we're going to do it all again. I think Trey misidentified the guilty teams there. Those were offsetting penalties. So we're going to do it again, I believe. Let's Correction, see. the hole was on the receiving team. And the personal foul for the horse collar tackle was on the kicking team. We're going to re offset the penalties and re-kick. There we go. So yeah, it's heard it never happened. Here. That's right. He heard you from way up here. First game of the year for, for some of these guys as well. This is going to be 
uh, a busy year in this stadium, Hard Rock Stadium. Not only the uh, the Dolphins and the Canes as usual, but the Super Bowl will be here coming That's right. up this year at the end of uh, the NFL season. Next year, this facility, which has been completely redone, will host the college football playoff championship game. So Miami is going to be the epicenter for championship football in our country uh, for the next couple of years. Yeah, the New England Patriots come into town tomorrow. Uh, Tom Brady and company on offense. And company? And company. Yeah. Wonder who they'll be talking a about tomorrow. AB will be in uniform. All right, so Bubba Baxa, the kickoff guy, and one of the great weapons that Bethune-Cookman has is the return man, Jimmy Robinson, if he can get his hands on the ball, which he will from three yards deep. Robinson averaged 33 yards a return last year, not so much this time. Let's get out of the sidelines to Doc. And I spoke with uh, Bethune-Cookman head coach Terry Sims. He said, you know, not taking anything away from Miami. They're a great football team, he said. But in the first half, he said, we did not execute. Offensively, he said, Akivius Williams and our guys, we had a good play called, a good uh, good pass called against the coverage, against the front, and we just did not execute. If we hand the ball off or we hit the receiver at, at the proper time, we've got yardage. And defensively, we've gotten penetration. We've stopped them. And then we suddenly give them a big third down conversion. He said, again, it all comes down to execution. He said, they're a good football team but we've just got to come out calm down and execute in the second half Terry said he came here to win they're gonna play the Canes every other year on this field yet yeah, till 2023 first play of the third quarter and the Canes defense picking up where it left off thanks to Pat Bethel who has been tremendous the sophomore from uh, Vero Beach continues to win the battle at the point of attack here today nearly on every snap you know doc makes a good point I, I agree with him and, and the assessment from head coach Terry Sims but the biggest problem I think for the Wildcats on offense has been field position this is kind of where they've started every drive inside their own 15 inside their own 10 yard line behind the sticks again Williams has room to run now you get to see his speed and he gets to about the 18 yard line before he's brought down by Romeo Finley from Fort Walton Beach up in Florida's Panhandle. I think if Bethune Cookman is going to have some success running the football in this third quarter, you're going to have to see Williams pull that zone read because Miami's getting a lot of penetration in between the tackles. They tried to spread them out some, even deep inside their own 10 yard line. And they're going to try to do it again now, but. Again, they're behind the sticks, and we seemingly are playing this entire game inside the Bethune 30. And only one of eight on third down. Need to get across the 22 on this third down play. Williams going to try to run for it. No, throws it away. And so the Wildcats go three and out to start the quarter. And we'll see their Australian punter Bryce Coward once more. And the Canes are going to get seemingly great field position once more. Yeah, it seems like the, number three. it seems like the script is going to hold true as we move into the second half. Just like, as it did in the first half, Miami's going to get excellent field position, and you really don't want to have Jeff Thomas touch this football. They've been kicking away from him for the majority of the first half. Let's see what the plan is going into the third quarter. Coming for the block, nearly got it once again. Thomas is going to have a chance to run this one back. And the Canes will take over just shy of midfield. There is a flag on the play. Miami's committed just three penalties today. Bethune has committed five. Let's see what this one is. Holding. Receiving team, number 23. 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick will be first down. Coach Diaz talking things over with Vernon Walker there, who got called for the hold. Well, you know, Extra Yard for Teachers Week is an annual celebration led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that honors great teachers across the country. We invite you to learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers. Follow at CFB Extra Yard or search for the hashtag Extra Yard Week. Canes will get it on the 35 to start their first second half possession. 
in their 2019 home opener. Miami will play five games in a row on this field. And a running play to Dallas. And he shoved out of bounds at the 42 by Tony Bowman of Bethune Cookman. You know, the Wildcats defense has been really opportunistic over the last couple of years. They had a pick six and a fumble return for a touchdown. Uh, they kind of get inspired by their defense, and that's what got them in the Jackson State game. You recall they were shut out in the that's first right. half of their opener, and it was their defense that got them going in the second half of their opener. And it's so tough after you've been displaced to try to come on the road, and even though it's just from Daytona down to South Florida, and play a quality opponent here without playing a second game. Dallas again running behind left tackle Zion Nelson. Moving the sticks for the Canes. DJ Dallas is a name that a lot of folks are going to learn an awful lot about this year when they play Miami. He's got the look. He and Cameron Harris both of terrific backs at Miami. He came into the game averaging over eight yards per carry. And he's only added to that today. He's done a really good job of getting yards on the perimeter against this Beth Bethune Cookman defense. Williams to the air once more. Good throw and catch to D. Wiggins. Miami's had 10 different players catch passes today. That's something that Danny knows wants to do. Keeping everybody involved. There's a there's a mental aspect to that too as well, isn't well, there? Dan told us, you know, naturally Osborne and Harley and Thomas and Jordan are going to get the football. He wanted to see Pope, Hightower, and Wiggins, the younger core of that receiving group, get in the game. They got a lot of plays. Last week against North Carolina, they wanted to see them at home and see how they performed in back-to-back -back weeks. Here's Brevin Jordan's second catch of the day, and that is a fine open field tackle by Vernon Walker. Dan Enos, the offensive coordinator. This is the second year in a row he's had to make a high-profile quarterback decision. He has, coming from Alabama and doing the things he had to do with Jalen Hurts and naturally Tua Tunga Vailoa. He's done a nice job in terms of spreading the football around, and I think that he's got a young quarterback he feels that can grow into something. Uh, he's only scratching the surface of what he can do offensively as a coordinator and as a, as a quarterback. Williams gets it out of there, delivers it beautifully to Harley. Harley down the sideline. Touchdown, Mike Harley from St. Thomas Aquinas. The fifth Kings touchdown of the day. It is so difficult to defend speed on the perimeter when you take bad angles. Four angles lead to touchdowns, and that's exactly what happened. Just a simple screen. Nice block on the outside by K.J. Osborne, but there's the short space speed and the balance tiptoeing down the sidelines for six points. And another opportunity for the touchdown ring on the Kane sideline. Baxa has hit all four of his PATs, although he did miss the chip shot field goal in the first half. That one's good and extends the Kane's lead to 35 nothing. But Jaron Williams has thrown two touchdowns today. Harley on the receiving end of that one. And the Kane's at home showing the hardware, leading 35 to nothing. final game on ACC Network coming up at 7.30 Eastern. Week three of the college football season rolls on with the Seminoles taking on number 25 UVA in our ACC and primetime matchup presented by Geico. Charlottesville will be buzzing tonight as the Knolls roll in to the Commonwealth of Virginia. Jimmy Robinson going to try it from near his goal line. Can he find a seam? No. Miami has done a really nice job in just about every area today when it comes to field position. Again, Bethune-Cookman will start inside the 20. That was Jimmy Murphy, by the way, really working hard to get down on the coverage team. Well, you're right. They start again. Does Bethune-Cookman inside the 20-yard line, and it's almost better you let the ball get into the end zone and get better field position yeah, to take come the out touchdown. and start, yeah. you know, with, with the score 35 to nothing. 
Well, that's what the uh, analytics and the odds would say. You know, Manny loves the odds. He, he talked about blackjack and how it's similar to football, how you play the odds. And Don't go jack. with your gut feeling. If you've got a 12 and the dealer's got a jack, you got a hit, right? That's right. He, he checks a lot with that analytics during the game and during the week as they're game planning, especially for fourth down situations in terms of special teams opportunities. Delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Mm. You just know for Alan Suber, the offensive coordinator, that just uh, really upsets him a delay of game penalty coming out of a timeout. Yeah, you never want to have that in, in your operation as a quarterback, as a coordinator, as an offense. And that's something you didn't get to play that second game to get those wrinkles out after week one, and that's where you make your most improvement historically. Williams throws. He had his man open, but he misfires along the left sideline. Oh, he wishes he had that one back, doesn't he? Well, that's an opportunity that head coach Terry Sims was talking to Doc at halftime about when you have open receivers down the field, you have to be able to convert and have to be able to hit those explosive plays or not, or you're still behind the chains on second down. How is open, but the incomplete pass sets up a second and 15. They'll go empty set again here and go with five receivers. Let's see what Blake Baker and the Canes do. They're coming to get him. Williams on the move. Anybody open? Nope. And he steps out of bounds. Throughout this entire game, I would say the defensive line for Miami is just outmatched and outpowered and sprinted by the Bethune-Cookman offensive line. And you have to have better protection for Akevius Williams to be able to catch the football in an empty set and only bring three or four, but they're getting home and flushing the quarterback and throwing the timing of the pass offense completely out, out of whack and out of touch in terms of being able to create positive plays down the field. And Blake has rotated that defensive front nearly every series. That, that's the first group in there now. Williams is in a world of trouble. Down he goes again. That's Patchen. They can't handle him up front, can they? No. Shaq Quarterman, it's been Garvin, Rousseau, Ford, Bethel, and now you get a little twist with Patchman coming from the outside in, and he zeroes in on Williams, the quarterback, for another third down opportunity. Another big stop for the Canes defensively. Howard will punt. That's a new return man back for the U, KJ Osborne. Transfer from the University of Buffalo. Canes are going to be set up with mighty good field position again. Osborne from the 44. And the Canes will start inside the 40. Miami's offense back on the field when we come back to Hard Rock Stadium. University of Miami. It's, it's a, it, it is a dream. I mean, uh, to think that uh, when he was a little boy, we used to go to the Orange Bowl and watch the Canes play there and, and see the dynasty that was built back then and now see him on the sidelines as a head coach. It's it really just a dream. It's hard to believe that we're here. People who may not know, your family's story is inspirational. Your dad was a political prisoner for Fidel Castro in Cuba. Your mama, Lisa, brought you here to this country at the age of six with one dime in her pocket. That's now, right. she has lived to see you be elected mayor of Miami twice and her grandson named head coach at the university. What is the message this story sends to those that are watching, especially for the young people? That's the American dream, right? That's what America is all about. And really, that's what symbolizes Miami, where, you know, the fight for the American dream is, is, is alive and well. And, and that's what Miami is. That's what America is. It's that opportunity. It's that woman who came here with nothing and sees her, her son and grandson grow into a position of prominence uh, in the city. I mean, it's just a, she couldn't be proud of herself. Well, your son was going to go work for ESPN. He was going to go work in that's production right. and sports. And then suddenly he calls you and says, Dad, I think I'm going to quit the job right. and go be a coach. What would you say? Well, that was a shock. But I told him, I said, what do you know about coaching? And then years later, when I told him I'm going to run for mayor, he goes, Dad, what do you know about being mayor? So he got me back. <laughs> in, in politics and sports, you got to have thick skins because you can't please everybody. How tough is it going to be on you when you do hear the criticism come about your son? Well, you know, I'm used to it. And, and I think he saw uh, the experience of, me, of my being mayor 
and learn, I think, a lot from that as well. And I think he understands. He's very focused. He's very determined. He's turning this program around. We're going to get back to prominence, and he knows that he's got to keep the noise on the outside and just keep focus on what he's doing. So why is he the guy? Why is Manny the guy that can bring Miami back to where it used to be, back to a national championship contender? Well, first and foremost, he's very talented, and he's a great coach, and he's proven that over 20 years of coaching. But aside from that, it's the intangible. He is Miami. He bleeds Miami. He grew up watching these guys at the University of Miami dominate college football, and he wants to take Miami back to that. Hey, Dad, thanks for your time, and enjoy the game. Absolutely. Thank you. The Diaz family story, guys, think about that. It, it seemed improbable, then it became incredible, and now it is historic. What a story. You come to this country with 10 cents in your pocket, your son grows up to be mayor, and your grandson is the head coach of the Canes. <laughs> it's just an amazing story, and just so, you know, proud that you can hear Doc tell it, and, and Mr. Diaz, just so proud of, of their family. You got, you got to hats off to everything they've done for this city. Darren Williams connects first down to Hightower. It will be first down and goal to go. But as Doc mentioned, you know, he worked for ESPN, did Manny. And I he think did. When, when he grew up here, Manny Diaz was going to be a sports journalist. He wasn't going to be the next Howard Schnellenberger or Jimmy Johnson. He was going to be the next Edwin Pope or Sonny Hirsch, That's the right. voice of the Canes. He wasn't going to be on the sidelines wearing a headset. He was going to be in the booth wearing one of these. It didn't take him long to know where his passion was. And, and you got to credit a guy for doing that at such a young age. He knew he, what he wanted, and he went after it. And now, all these years later, he's achieved it. First down and goal, and Harris powers it towards the goal line. And they roll him down inside the one. Well, if I'm Dan Enos, I give it right back to Cameron Harris because he's had some hard luck over the last couple of weeks, especially last week against North Carolina, as you can see, well short of the line to reach of the goal line. He, he had a couple big runs taken back. He deserves to get himself in the end zone. The ruling on the field is that the runner was down short of the goal line. The previous play is under further review. So we will take a look at it. I think on the first replay, John, you would agree that the Wildcats made the stop on Harris. And we'll take a look at it once more. It looked that way initially. As Harris was twisting in the air, his back hides the football, but it looked like he touches down clearly an elbow there shy of the goal line. So I, I would believe that he's down inside the one yard line right there. Elbow down. Yeah. Good effort to try to twist his body to get himself airborne into the end zone. But he just falls about a half yard shot. Veteran official Joe Ryder is the replay official. He's watching this play closely. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Second down. I think you dial number 23 up once again, get him going north and south in between the tackles and see if that young offensive line can move people a yard into the end zone. All this, all Harris needs is a crease, but that offensive line has done a pretty good job today protecting Jaron Williams in the pass game, and they've done a nice job for. DJ Dallas providing him with some running room. He's gone over 100 yards, and now you see Harris wanting to get into the end zone for a touchdown. Canes have some backs now. I mean, DJ Dallas, we've seen already the first couple of weeks of the season. Same with Harris. We may get a look at Robert Burns later, and, and, and when he gets healthy, uh, Lorenzo Lingard. I mean, Miami has no shortage of really highly recruited, highly skilled backs. Williams looking to throw, lets it go. Touchdown, Miami. That's Larry Hodges with the touchdown reception and another passing touchdown for Jaron Williams. Good play action here on second down. Looked like Williams initially was going to run the football. He had an option shy or short of Hodges, and that was Harris in the end zone in the early part of the end zone, right, right over the goal line, but decides to pump it into the tight end turn fullback, who does a lot of that dirty work on Red zone opportunity, short yardage. He gets that touchdown, first touchdown of the season. 
Max adds the extra point. Well, Jaron Williams has thrown three touchdowns. DJ Dallas has run for three. Six TDs on the day, and the Canes are cruising at home. Well, the huddle is our signature football show hosted by Jack Collinsworth with analyst Eric McLean, E.J. Manuel, and Mark Rick. They'll preview the weekend slate of games, keep you in the know on all things ACC football. You can catch it Friday night at 8 Eastern, Saturday mornings at 11 right here on ACCN. And the ESPN app. Well, Miami, number 12, is now wearing number 30. Well, it's been all about the U today. Canes open up a 42 nothing lead late here in this third quarter. Remember, it was just 14 nothing with a minute to go in the second That's quarter. That's right. But it's been all Miami since. Well, it did a really good job of getting the ball back before halftime and then using that sudden change opportunity to get into the end zone, and that really propelled them into this second half and, and 42 points right now as they kick it with 436 left to go in this quarter. Jimmy Robinson will up for the touchback. We mentioned the fact that Miami is going to play five consecutive games here at Hard Rock Stadium. There is an open date in there, but take a look at how this works out, John. And only three teams in the country, Miami, Wisconsin, and Missouri, have that luxury of a homestand like that. Well, I think it's perfect for what Miami needs to do now. After losing their first two games by a total of seven points, they get a chance to grow up, and they get to grow up at Hard Rock Stadium. And they have a bye week in between there to give them some cushion in case they have some nicks and bumps and bruises along the way. But they're going to be a much better team as they get to Virginia October 11th and then Georgia Tech and Pittsburgh on the road. And they go to FIU. They go to Florida State. So they're only going to leave the state twice right. between now and Christmas. Yeah, it's the perfect opportunity for this the young team. Game. Offense, five-yard penalty, first down. And that's about the second or third time on offense, Correct. Bethune has Prior been able to delay of game. Timeout, Bethune Cookman. There we go. The half. It'll be a 30 second timeout. Frustration there for fifth year coach Terry Sims. Third delay of game penalty had it stood, but he was able to get the timeout in advance. But you're right, when you take a look at the Canes' schedule with a young team, They've got a brand new indoor facility, which we got a beautiful. Was unbelievable. The, yeah, what what the Canes have to work with now in Coral Gables, in terms of practice facility, in terms of where their meeting rooms are, uh, just state of the art, first class. It's it's unbelievable the opportunity that these young student athletes have now to go down and and be coached by Manny and his staff and be able to be able to grow as a, as a young football team for not only this year's team but teams to come that you know young kids around South Florida that want to stay home have a great opportunity at, at a at a wonderful university you know doc they really like that indoor facility and they've invested a lot of money here in this well they certainly have I mean and they talk about they praise Mark Rick the former coach here who retired because not only did he donate a million dollars, but he was a major proponent in getting that new indoor facility, the Carroll Soffer Indoor Practice Facility, completed. 81,800 square feet. It has two turf fields, a 90-yard field, and right beside it, a 40-yard field for offensive and defensive lines. It is state-of-the-art, and on, around the walls are the pictures of some of the great Miami Hurricanes, not only All-Americans, but all pros uh, that went on to play many, many years in the NFL. On second down, Miami... Able to chalk off Isaac Washington there. You may be saying, well, why does Miami need an indoor facility? And the, <laughs> you don't live in South Florida, right? You, you don't realize how many times practice can be interrupted by even lightning. Yes. You've got to get off the field and move inside. And that is something that each coach here has had to uh, battle over the years. So heavy afternoon rainstorms or lightning. Yeah, it's like clockwork in South Florida, especially in Miami, where you get that 3 o'clock or 3.30 and and you, you don't know what the practice times are going to be so you want to be able to get inside and and get your work done and they've done a nice job of, in getting that facility up and built and now they take advantage of it here's isaac washington bursting free and the young man from cape coral florida has a big run but we have a flag on the play the Bethune Cookman band, which has been really active today, excited, Holden. but it's Offense, coming back. Number 13. 10 yard penalty. You made third down. Oh, they finally crossed midfield. The pride was so excited. 
and it's coming back. It looked like it was going to go the distance as they started out towards their own bench and going maybe for a 40 yard, 50 yard game, but it's going to come back. But you're right, the band got, got excited. They had reason to stand up and do what they do best. They put on a great show at halftime. This was my first time to see uh, the Pride, the, the Duke Cookman band. And they were dynamite. And the Wildcats finally get a big offensive play, but it is coming back on the hold. Third down. Let's see if the Wildcats can convert this time. And it's dropped. That ball was thrown well, and Spain could not hang on. Yeah, you got to be able to convert there just to get some yards for your kicking game. They've been kicking out of their own end zone multiple times inside their 10, 15 yard line. So now on fourth down, they're going to give it back to the Canes. Well, my name, number three is now. Osborne is the return man once again. Thomas had that role in the first half. And Osborne here in the second. Good for the. This player is under further review for a possible targeting foul. So they're going to look at this previous play and see if there was targeting on the hit. Initially, when the third down opportunity fell to the ground, I didn't notice the targeting. I was looking at the receiver. I don't think that's targeting in terms of where Trayvon Hill gets airborne. I don't think that the, there was enough contact. He he launches, but I don't think he the crown of the helmet or, or the contact warranted targeting. Yeah, Hill certainly did launch, but I don't know that there was contact, although I don't know that there needs to be in that situation. Let's watch this again. Well, Hill gets airborne there and he's trying to deflect the pass. I think it's more of the shoulder that gets Williams than Trayvon's one of five players who transferred to Miami. He was leading Virginia Tech in sacks and tackles for loss a year ago when he was suspended at Virginia Tech, finished up the year academically but did not play, and then transferred to Miami. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. The zone of the play will be fourth down. Hill is happy for that. Miami had uh, Mari Carter ejected from the game last week That's at Chapel right. Hill in the, in the first, first half. And, and Hill can be a difference maker for this rotation in terms of what he brings to the table. He's a tough guy that gets around the football with regularity. He'll have a one season of eligibility here for the Canes. With the left foot, Bryce Coward kicking to Osborne. Let's it roll out of bounds. And again, the Canes with great field position looking for their first win of the year. Deliver bullets all day long. 19 to 24 for 254, three touchdowns, which is a career high. And he's been able to really run the offense the way offensive coordinator Dan Enos would like it run. Ball out quickly, decisive in the pocket, and he's made really good decisions in terms of getting up to the line of scrimmage. In the first half, he was nearly per perfect. The second half, he was seven of seven, but career high in touchdowns. And so Nikosi Perry, who started much of last year for the Canes, will get his first opportunity to play today. Redshirt sophomore from Ocala, started six games for the Canes a year ago. He had a great week of practice. We were told he, he worked extremely hard to win the backup position, and he's earned the right to get into this football game, even with the score of 42 to nothing. If something were to happen, you have a you have confidence in a quarterback coming in and stepping in, and that level of where you want your quarterback to play at doesn't drop significantly. Harry to the air, and he's got a really strong arm, and he connects with Hightower. And that will be enough for the first down for the Canes. Laguerre pushed Hightower out of bounds as promised yesterday. Eno said, "I want some of our younger uh, receivers." to get into the action here against Bethune Cookman and they've been able to do that exactly. And they've been able to spread the football around whether it's Williams throwing it and now Perry throwing it from the pocket and you mentioned the strong arm he, he can throw it all over the field. Yeah. 
safe throw. Harley with the catch. And they get him on the ground. That's a good tackle. Good effort by Thomas out in front of Mike Harley trying to deliver that block to spring him to the wide side of the field. You have to be able to block in this offense if you're going to stay on the field for UM at receiver. That's a pretty good job of trying to get a block on the perimeter on Miller, but Miller did a better job of getting back on his feet for the tackle. Nikosi Parry from the 36 on the jet sweep. Wow, what the speed for Pope. He can really scoot down to the 15-yard line. No lack of athletes whatsoever. Huh? Pope can fly. He may have gotten ding there when he was getting airborne trying to split defenders as he's still down on the turf. You're right, though. Whether it's Osborne or Harley or Thomas, now Pope on the end around. Right here is where he tries to squeeze through, and I think he just gets a shot to the rib area on the left side. Right there, he's trying to split the defenders. That might have might where he was injured on the play. It's amazing how many touches different Miami players get, whether a receiver is taking the ball on an end around or they're throwing to them. A dozen different guys have touched the ball offensively for Miami, not including the quarterback. That's right. And credit the offensive line. They've had a much better day as the training staff out on the field. Pope three targets three receptions for 92 yards and the 21 yards on the ground. And he's definitely in pain. It looks like the right leg the right side. Is where the training staff is assisting Pope. Well that's encouraging that marks up. Doc Punch and I had a. An opportunity to visit with Vincent Scalvo, Vinny Scalvo to the left, longtime medical staff of the, of the Miami Hurricanes, and what a treat that was, telling, taking us through just about every player that he's been around and roommate of Vinny Testaverde way back when, and it, it was fun visiting with him, and I know Doc enjoyed that, that conversation immensely. He's got a beautiful brand-new facility to work in, too. He does. Miami has spent an awful lot of uh, money on its football complex. Doc, you guys had a chance to, to, to visit yesterday in Vinny's brand new Sweet Digs, didn't you? Yeah, it's outstanding. You know, Vinny's a, Vinny's a legend when it comes to athletic trainers, and so is the guy walking off the field in front of him. That's Dr. Lee Kaplan, the orthopedic surgeon, who actually worked with uh, Freddie Fu at the University of Pittsburgh. But uh, Vinny worked with the New York Yankees. He has been in a lot of different organizations, but when he came here, he had stuck. He loved being a part of the Miami organization. In fact, he's so valuable here as they come off the field. When they bring recruits in, they bring the moms and dads into his office and sit them down and let him tell them about how he's going to look after their kids. Yeah, and you just hope that Pope's okay. It looked like he was fine as he got up, but he, as he got closer to the hurricane bench, it looked like he was grimacing a little bit, a little bit more. Harry's able to sidestep the rush. And the Wildcats getting down on the 15 yard line. It'll be second down and 10. Ontario Johnson is out of uh, East Mississippi Junior College with the play, making the tackle on Nicosi Perry. Probably the biggest difference between Nicosi and Jaron as a quarterback are maybe he throws a flatter pass, maybe a firmer pass, does Perry. And he's a little bit more nimble in the pocket, being able to elude pressure. Wasn't able to do it on first down, but he does have that quick twitch getting away from defenders. Miami in the red zone again. They just fired a couple of times here, which upset Manny Diaz. Perry to the end zone. It's tipped, nearly picked. As Perry was trying to connect with Hightower, it was tipped by Ontario Johnson. We've seen Devin James get his hands on the football from the middle linebacker spot. This time, Johnson almost takes it down from the outside linebacker position. Perry trying to step up and just fit it over and that's where that flat football comes into play if he has a little bit more touch on it a little bit more air he's able to drop it in the end zone and that's an easy six points straight velocity and arm strength Perry might be the guy on yes. this team with the strongest arm but you have to be able to fit that one in there with a little less velocity and a little bit more air perfect example right there another chance for Nikosi oh they set up the screen here goes Harris his way towards the goal line and they rule him out inside the one. 
He runs downhill to Cameron Harris, whether he's taken a handoff or a little screen pass like that. I know the eyes get bigger when those running back gets the screen pass and he sees that offensive line out in front of him. McCain's knocking at the door again inside the one. Well, these Miami fans have been waiting for something to smile about today here at Hard Rock. All smiles for the Canes on their way to their first win of the year. Hard Rock Stadium. DJ Dallas has run for three touchdowns. Jaron Williams has thrown for three. And Miami's defense has held Bethune Cookman to just 80 total yards in this dominating performance here today. Yeah, Miami's defense has done a really good job on third down, only allowing Bethune Cookman one conversion on 11 attempts. They've been dominant in terms of getting the football away from that offense. And then allowing Jaron Williams to pave the way for Nikosi Perry to get into the game as we start the fourth quarter. First down and goal for Perry. And the toss to Harris, cuts it back and scores. Cameron Harris, his first touchdown of the day in his second of the season. And some post play pushing and shoving. Canes make it look easy there. Eight plays, 54 yards, only 250 off the clock. They've been able to do what they wanted on offense. They've been able to establish the line of scrimmage, run the football effectively with DJ Dallas and now Cameron Harris for the touchdown and really provide excellent pass protection for Jaron Williams through two and a half to three quarters as Perry takes his place. But Cameron Harris, young man that Played so well in Chapel Hill last week, ran it hard. He gets his first touchdown of the day here early in the fourth. Impressive over Bethune Cookman, up 49 0, well on its way to its first win of the season is Miami, opening up a five game homestand here at Hard Rock Stadium. And another kickoff opportunity for Bubba Baxa, booting it back to. That young, uh, young man, Jimmy Robinson, who has been dying to show the nation how fast he is, how elusive he is. You know, a year ago, he had three 60-yard touchdowns in the same game. He's an explosive guy, but Bubba knows that too, and Bubba keeps driving it over his head. Not this one. Jimmy's going to get a chance to run it back. And Jimmy gets this one to the 40. You can kind of tell if he gets a seam, he's going to be an explosive guy. He is gone. Once he gets in the open field, he really accelerates and does a nice job of separating himself from a, a would-be tackler. All right, so last year, he ran a kickback. And you talk about fast. It doesn't matter what level of football you're playing. If you can go 100 yards as fast as this kid can go, watch this. This is from November of last year. Jimmy Robinson, he's wearing number one now. This was number 22 a year ago. Well, it's almost a straight line in between the hash and the numbers, and he just runs away from everybody. It was a big game last year against NC Central, one that the Wildcats would eventually win in double overtime. He was a state track star up there in uh, high school at Flagler Palm Coast High School. He played for Travis Rowland for the uh, Bulldogs, who won again last night, I should point out. Uh, Travis Rowland, much like uh, so many people that take such great pride in Bethune Cookman, another uh, several of his players. Uh, Quayshon Bird plays for this team, and uh, clearly Jimmy Robinson's a star. Doc, what do you have for us down there? Yeah, you're talking about him going to Flagler Palm Coast High School. I'm familiar with that high school. He used to be an ER physician in that area, and they have a lot of talented players that come through there. Not only was he a great football player, you mentioned, but a track star. With very little preparation, he went to the 4A state track meet from Flagler Palm Coast and recorded a 10.79 100-meter run in the uh, state track meet. And then, of course, he left there and went to Mercer, spent one year at Mercer, where he was a freshman on the all-freshman team in the Southern Conference. And the word is he just didn't get along. He had a little disagreement with the coach, which is not good. So he ends up down at Bethune-Cookman. And now you see uh, the excitement he has brought to the Wildcats. You know what else he excelled at, Doc? He, he blocked six field goals in high school. He was just so fast getting off the line. He was able to really contribute. 
New quarterback in the game now for the Wildcats, and it's uh, sophomore Devin Black from Ruskin, Florida, on the west coast of uh, the state of Florida. He is the future quarterback for this team and a mass communications major for the Wildcats. Get into a game in Hard Rock Stadium in front of his family and friends, get some experience. I think this is a good thing now for Bethune Cookman coming in with, with the game really out of hand at 49 to nothing. Get some players into this football game that you're going to have to rely on for the rest of the year. Another punt for the young man from Hobart, Tasmania. Fair catch called for, and they got in the way of the return man, Osborne. It'll roll down to the 13, but you see the fair catch interference flag, which was thrown by this ACC crew. Clearly, they ran into KJ. Kick catching interference. Kicking team, number 87. 15-yard penalty, first down. Timeout. That's the eighth penalty of the day and a teaching moment for Coach Sims. We are they went around the league today and not a great day for sure for the conference with NC State, Pittsburgh, and most notably Georgia Tech all losing some non-conference games. Yeah, that's the big surprise. Georgia Tech losing at home. It looked like they were going to get into the end zone. They end up tying it at the end and then losing in overtime. But Louisville doing a good job. I, I'm waiting to see Florida State, what they're going to do tonight uh, at Virginia, you know, with James Blackman as a quarterback. They've had defensive issues, and they bring in former USF and former defensive coordinator at Oregon, Jim Levitt, as a defensive analyst. So if that helps them on defense right away, we'll be able to tell tonight. But they need some help and immediate help on defense. And that's coming up in about 45 minutes from Scott Stadium in Charlottesville. Cavaliers get the Knowles at home in our ACC in primetime matchup presented by Geico. You, do you remember back in 1995, Florida State had not lost an ACC game? Yes. And they go up to Scott Stadium, and that was the first time Virginia or anyone in this conference beat Florida State. I remember that game, and it was a night game there and a great atmosphere, and I think it was work done that gets stopped uh, on the last play of the game. That was 1995. But tonight, it's a much different story. Virginia's actually favored in this game, and it begins a key stretch for UVA. They've got, they've got Old Dominion next week in prime time. Then they go to South Bend, and then they come here. So you can't look ahead, obviously. They, that's three games away, but you can see how things are kind of setting up for UVA, right? They've got the road paved to be undefeated when they when they face Miami, and that, that's for sure. And I know head coach Rocco Mendenhall doesn't want to get ahead of the skis that way, but... You get a defense that loves to bring pressure. Mm -hmm. You've got a quarterback in Bryce Perkins that uh, is really difficult to stop when he's off schedule with his runs and his scrambling. And that, that adds a dimension to defenses. It applies a, a lot of pressure to opposing defenses. Seminoles haven't played great. You saw Cam Akers pop up on the stat. By the way, he is a native Virginian who could have gone to UVA. He was offered by them. Cam's got some uh, amazing statistics. He is having a seminal year, which they expected. Unfortunately, he's not getting the help the help around That's him. Right. But but Cam Akers at this point has been one of the real stars of the first month of this season for anybody in this league and specifically a uh, coach Taggart in Tallahassee. Well, it hasn't been the first half that has hurt Florida State. It's been the second half. Nikosi to the air. Connecting once again with the young man from IMG Academy, Brian Hightower. You know, the other game that, that's really exciting tonight uh, is the primetime game at the Dome, or is it the Carrier Dome? Clemson visits Syracuse tonight. The top-ranked Tigers, 17 wins in a row, going to the place where they lost Two years ago. Two years, the last time they lost a game. And last year, Syracuse had a 10-point lead, knocked out Trevor Lawrence. He was out of the game. And backup quarterback Chase Bruce comes in, goes 94 yards, and they end up escaping with a win. Syracuse really uh, did not play well last week at Maryland, particularly on the defensive side. Parry's pass is incomplete. After, after giving up so many points and so many yards at, at Maryland, how do they slow down Clemson? It's going to be difficult. You have to have your, your offense stay on the field, and, and that's the job of Tommy DeVito. You know, he's a guy that's come in for Eric Dungy, and, and Eric Dungy's been the intangible over the last couple of years. He's thrown for over 500 yards. He 
and three touchdowns. He's rushed for two touchdowns and really put pressure on the Clemson defense. And now DeVito's got to be the guy that keeps him on the field and keeps that Clemson offense on the sidelines. Well, one thing that is exciting is the atmosphere that we will see uh, coming up in about 40 minutes uh, at Syracuse. Uh, I know how excited folks are up there for a primetime game. The number one team in the, in country. the country coming in. Uh, a lot of orange yeah. at the Dome tonight. You know, Clemson comes into the game with a 17-game winning streak, obviously the longest in the nation, and they'll have pressure right away. I think it'll be important for Clemson to, to score first and score quickly to kind of take the crowd out of the Carrier Dome. We've seen Robert Burns carrying for the Canes here. It's going to be third down and about a yard to go. Burns will get this carry, and he's got the first down inside the 10, and the Canes are set up first down and goal to go. Couple it's exciting. It's exciting for another team to have the opportunity to play a home, nationally televised game on a Saturday night, and that's the opportunity that Syracuse gets tonight, and our colleague Sean McDonough, who won the that's right, Aaron's honor. Award that's right. uh, today, the highest honor any Syracuse alum can get. He was on today, and a nice uh, job that Chris Fowler stepping aside right. and let Sean do the game tonight. Uh, in prime time at his alma mater. Yeah, congratulations to Sean and, and well deserved. Miami has been unstoppable since the last two possessions of the second quarter. Nikosi Perry on in relief of Jaron Williams. The little end around. To near the three yard line. That's Jeremiah Payton with the carry for Miami. The first couple of weeks of the season, Miami has hadn't had the opportunity to really go deep into its roster, particularly in the fourth quarter because they've been in these tight games. That's one thing Manny's getting today. A lot of kids are playing. Well, they got me flustered. I was looking for 12 on my sheet. I didn't I didn't see him, but I'm glad you had him. Peyton on there on that end around is Manny Diaz. I think he's going to be happy about the performance of what they were able to accomplish but he knows there's a lot of work to do a lot of still a lot of cleanup yeah. on things that he wants to be sharper as they head into the ACC schedule nine different Miami players have run the ball today 12 have caught the ball and Manny wants a timeout he was scampering down the sideline and he calls timeout timeout Miami One thing that Manny talked about over the last couple of weeks was the impact of Hurricane Dorian on this community. Everyone in South Florida was in, uh, was ready for a major impact for Hurricane Dorian. And we encourage you to help people affected by Hurricane Dorian and your donation will support Red Cross preparation, response and recovery efforts in the U.S. and the Bahamas. Please take a look at that on your screen. Visit www.redcross.org slash ESPN. Or call 1-800-RED-CROSS to donate now. The Bahamas, just a couple hundred miles east of here, and everyone in, in this community uh, was, was bracing for a direct hit. Uh, unfortunately, it hit the Bahamas. Yes, absolutely, and, and your heart goes out to everyone in the Bahamas. There was a lot of devastation with wind and rain and uh, y y anything you can do. And, and locally in South Florida, you've seen people with canned goods and perishable goods and going to fire stations and wherever that you can donate. And I know the Miami Dolphins have done a really good job in the community of trying to get things over to the Bahamas to, to aid and assist those in need. Second down and goal for the Canes looking to add to a 49 point advantage here. Nikosi Perry to the air and an easy touchdown pass to Hodges. Well, you said sometimes he rifles it when he needs a little touch. That one he put just enough air under it. That's about as easy as it gets. He did, and Hodges gets his second touchdown reception of the afternoon. Just a really efficient drive by the backup quarterback, Nikosi Perry. And I'm sure that fans are wondering why, you know, the, the Hurricanes are pushing the football in the air. You have to be able to, to run some semblance of your offense in case Nikosi's asked to go in. In the next couple of weeks, he has to have that, that feel for throwing the football. I would expect it to be on the ground now with 8.21 left to go, but the Canes doing a great job of doing a night play, 57-yard drive. They take close to five minutes off the clock. South Carolina takes on number 20 Clemson at historic Riggs Field, 6 p.m. Eastern, right here on ACCN. You can also catch it on the ESPN app. Among the most impressive things we have seen today, the Bethune-Cookman Band. 
They are always impressive. Amazing. Whether you rank it, the best bands you've ever seen, you've ever heard. I'm, I'm Number one. The Thune Cook, That's right. Those kids uh, in the group, they, they brought it today. All right, here is Jimmy Robinson. And he gets stopped inside the 15-yard line. Let's go down to the sidelines to Dr. Punch. You know, when Mark Rick retired last year and Manny was made the head coach 10 hours later, the, one of the first things Manny did was he said he wanted to make sure everyone in the building knew that we have to all own that 7-6 and six record, including me. He said if you wore a U on the side of your helmet or over the heart of your coaching shirt, you are responsible. He praised Mark Rick for not only donating a million dollars, but getting the new indoor practice facility built. He praised Mark Rick's selfless leadership. And he finished by saying, Mark Rick is the best man I have ever worked for. No finger pointing from Manny Diaz, just a lot of verbal hugs and a promise to build a new Miami. What class showing how much he loved the man who gave him this opportunity. Well, I know Manny's excited here, and I know Coach Rick watching uh, back in the studio is also really happy, finally, that Manny's going to get a big win here today. Well, there's no one pulling harder for, for Manny Diaz than than Mark, and I, I'm sure that, you know, he set a foundation in, in how he wants to to coach this team, and I'm sure he's pulled a lot of things off of Coach Rick and the way he handled players, the way he handled situations, and, and added that to an arsenal of what he can do as a head coach. So I, I think there's a lot to learn from guys like that when you follow people that have been so good at what they've done for so long as Mark has. You're definitely better as a head coach for being around guys like that. Man, he's getting a lot of his younger kids in there. So the young linebacker you saw there, number six, that's a freshman, uh, Sam Brooks, uh, from right near here uh, that just showed some really amazing speed. You know, Quarterman's gone after this year. And so Brooks is a guy. He makes that hit there, too. You should see the explosiveness of number six in orange. Everyone a year from now will say, oh, how are you going to replace Quarterman? A year from now, that young kid's going to put on a few more pounds, right? He's just 210 now. Right. What's amazing how McLeod, Pickney, and Quarterman have played together, that, that threesome in terms of being able to hold down the Miami defense in the middle, and maybe a little less with McLeod this year so far because Miami's played a lot with two linebackers and an extra defensive back. But all three of those guys, you have to give them credit. They, they really carried on a huge tradition of defense and linebackers at Linebacker U here in Miami. Another punt for Bethune-Cookman, which has not crossed the 50-yard line offensively today and has just 77 yards of offense for the entire day. The busiest guy, that gentleman, Bryce Coward, the VCU punt. Miami's going to get its first win and for Manny Diaz and the Canes fans and their well, band as well. They needed a win, didn't yeah, they? It's going to feel good. You know, a win is a win, and I don't care how you get it, and you need one. When you're 0-2 and you lose two, two football games by a total of seven points, you have to be able to get in the win column, and Miami did that today. Nikosi Perry in release, uh, uh, relief of Williams, hands it off on first down, and that is Jimmy Murphy. Everyone on the Canes offense is going to get a touch, it appears, here today, and that's Jimmy's first carry of the day. His jersey looks like he's been out there all game, though, doesn't it? A lot of special teams work, possibly, right? <laughs> Evidently. Tate Martell is in the ball game as the uh, slot receiver as well. So keep an eye on that. If Tate is involved in the play. Number 18 in orange. He was the gentleman that transferred from Ohio State, competed for the quarterback job, did not get it. That's Murphy again on the carry. But what was interesting, Dan Enos was filling us in yesterday when they told Tate Martell that, well, we're going to go with Jaron as the starting quarterback. His first reaction was, I want to get on the field. Where else can I play? That's what he told Manny. And uh, it was Martell's impressive. now a receiver. It was impressive because he just wants to play and contribute, and that place is going to be at, at the slot receiver position. So you, you get a guy that catches the ball naturally. He's a great athlete, didn't win the quarterback position that he thought he would, but now he wants to contribute and just be part of this football team. Perry to the air. Nicely thrown. 
That's Peyton again. And he's down near the 10. Second catch for Jeremiah Peyton. A flick of the wrist and a dart thrown by Nikosi Perry. There is a wealth of talent at wide receiver for, uni for the University of Miami. I mean, that ball's off the frame. He has a huge catch radius, concentration going over the middle, and then speed to get to the outside. Miami closing in on a 600-yard offensive day. And they played pretty well last week offensively you know, up in uh, Chapel Hill where they, they really did 500 yards just about 488 a week ago. Perry fakes the throw, the little toss, and it'll be second down and goal to go. Robert Burns second carry. Manny's got his second group on the offensive line in there as well. That Cleveland Reed is a true freshman in there. Uh, the, that offensive line probably needed a lot of work anyway, the first group, but Manny has cleared his That's bench. Right. He's going as deep as he can here, uh, here in the second half. Well, they had some changes after week one and 10 sacks going up against the University of Florida, and they kicked Scape out to right tackle. And Clark went into the right guard position, and you get guys now that are getting valuable experience that are in there. This is Murphy, and he's ruled down near the four-yard line. And it'll be third down and goal. And you've got every cane on the sidelines just pulling for Murphy to get into the end zone. Everybody in an in a orange uniform seems to be down north or east of the 40-yard line going towards the east end zone. I think Manny found out and he told us yesterday that this team had backbone at North Carolina down 17 to 3 coming back and taking the lead and you can see the size of Murphy he's not he's not the size of DJ Dallas but he has a huge cheerleader on the sidelines wanting him to get into the end zone and DJ scored three touchdowns himself now he wants to see his teammate get one and he does how about that and the Kings sideline erupts and Murphy Maybe the happiest young man in South Florida. <laughs> hey, how about that for Murphy? <laughs> I believe he's going to get a flag for that. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. I think DJ Dallas had the toughest tackle, and that was on Murphy. Get Murphy the rings. Jimmy Murphy, ladies and gentlemen, is about to wear the touchdown rings. That's what he's looking for. Where are they? There we go. <laughs> I think the greatest thing you can get out of that, the pure enjoyment of getting in the end zone, but the way his team is celebrating with him. I mean, the guy's getting carried off the, on the sidelines. Great effort to bounce this outside. Good vision. Keeps his balance. And once he gets in the end zone, I don't know if we have this long enough, but DJ Dallas knocks him down about the 15-yard line right here. <laughs> Great stuff. That's what football is all about. If you can't get excited about playing the, the sport, you shouldn't put on the pads. Senior walk on from uh, Avon, Connecticut, Jimmy Murphy. And now his teammates are telling him as Nikosi gets up to him, look to the video board and the big hug. And then he's probably going to ask, are they going to make me run extra laps on Monday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a mental error for the flip. I think he did around the 25 yard line. He may sleep in the rings. I, I, I'm guessing, but he may have to take the rings home. Well, you can see right here the passion and the love everybody on that team has for Jimmy Murphy. Absolutely. What it means for, for a guy that likely doesn't ever play, right? Every team has one. And the million dollar in picture, the embrace with Manny. He said, maybe do the flip on the sidelines next time, right? <laughs>
Well, I don't know that Jimmy Murphy is going to be the ACC football offensive back of the week, but I think he gets the award for the best post touchdown flip. Absolutely. That was big time. The funny thing is, I don't know how tall we're, what Jimmy Murphy's listed at, but everybody seems to be about a foot and a half taller than Jimmy. They list him at 5'7". Yeah. Here's Robinson on the short kickoff for Bethune Cookman. Robinson has a lane. There is a flag. This is going to come back. And a second flag is thrown in as well with the Canes leading 63 nothing in the final two and a half minutes. All right, so everyone in Avon, Connecticut, get ready. We are going to show this to you one more time. Jimmy Murphy showing really at all 5-7 is used here, bouncing it outside. Just great vision to get outside. And then the excitement, the flip right there. There's the biggest hit. Parrott gives him the biggest hit that Murphy had taken all the fourth quarter. And the, the flip is great. You know, you get the 15 yards now. You get the rings on the sidelines. Then he gets carried on the sidelines, which is even better. I'm, I'm wagering just a small wager between Bill. I'm, I'm going to say he's taking the rings home. There, there's no doubt about it. I think he's taking the rings home. Well, if nothing else, take it out to South Beach tonight, right? Well, at least you could prove that you got it in the end zone, right? Just a special teams guy for the most part. And he gets his first career touchdown uh, tonight. Yeah, that's great stuff. He's so happy. And you know, the, the great joy about team sports is seeing every person on your team come out and actually give you a hug and celebrate with you and to say way to go. Because I'm sure that Jimmy works as hard as anybody from Monday to Friday and maybe never gets those opportunities and he gets it tonight. He, uh, we're, we're doing some uh, some research, obviously, on a guy that's probably 110 on the 85 roster, right? Because he's a walk-on. Right. He's been named the scout team player of the week more than any other player on no the doubt. Miami team over the last two years. A, a walk-on. He, he at the end of last year's game against Savannah State, Coach Rick said he covered kicks better than anybody we had. Only goes full speed. He's only 5'7". Uh, and he well, was named the defensive scout team player of the week nearly every week. You can tell every person uh, respects what he gives on every day at practice because he makes this team better. Final minute and a half of play. The question now is uh, can Bethune cross the 50? This team has not crossed the 50 yard line yet today. But Jimmy's going to be able to tell his kids about how he pulled away and scored on a 70-yard right. touchdown run. He'll have video evidence <laughs> for sure. That was a nice play. That's ruled an incomplete pass, and that stops the clock with a 101 to play. Well, Miami did what they needed to do today. They came out, they started fast, they got the offensive line going, they got Jaron Williams going, throwing three touchdowns, DJ was really good DJ Dallas from the running aspect another 100 yard day for him. Well this is what Miami wanted to do. They, they, they wanted to dominate. Coach was talking about we need to get our identity uh, and they've done, done a whole bunch of good things here today. On second and ten and for the first time the Wildcats cross the 50 that's Aaron Thompson. It'll be third down and one. Kyle Smith is the third Wildcats quarterback of the day. And throwing it on third and short and taking a deep shot. And it's caught first down to the 20 yard line. Interesting play call but it makes sense because he would have gone for it on fourth down anyway. And that was Trenton Jackson with the reception. And now in the final 20 seconds, Bethune Cookman looking to ruin the shutout. Yeah, Jackson did a nice job idling down and just securing the catch in just inside the 20 yard line. Clock winding down. This will be the final play of the game. 
to the end zone. And it's broken up, and Miami gets the shutout. As the throw to the end zone by Kyle Smith incomplete, and Manny Diaz gets his first head coaching victory for the University of Miami. The Canes dominate in just about every way here today, and the Canes open their five-game homestand at Hard Rock with a victory. Four more.